Welcome back to NBC Bay Area News tonight. APEC is over, we know that, but the messaging and narrative continues. What exactly happened here in San Francisco this week? Was it really substantial? Was there somewhat of a winner in all of this? especially when it comes to the U.S.-China talks. Joining us now is Lu Jin. She's a journalist based in Beijing for CGTN, which is the English language channel for Chinese government broadcaster China Global Television. Nice to have you on the program. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much, Raj, for having me. Overall impressions of San Francisco? Did you enjoy, enjoy your week here, you and your crew? A little bit uh, in in the intervals of the of the reporting. It's um, um, of course we were in the quarter with a lot of homeless people, but I was fortunate to be taken to the nicer quarters as well, and I had a wonderful time. So uh, I'm happy to see both sides of San Francisco. Yeah, and, and that you did. Uh, let me start by asking: Just how much journalistic freedom do you have? I, I, are you do you have guardrails or parameters in terms of your analysis of what happened here, or maybe even your criticism of the Chinese government? Well. Um, Every time I'm asked the same question, as if that is the most important question for a journalist, I think, coming from the Chinese perspective, having worked 25 years as a journalist, the most important question to ask, are we being professional and responsible reporters? Are we giving people the information that is accurate, not just accurate partially, but accurate comprehensively? Are we being responsible in giving people the kind of quality information that they need so that they can build their decisions on? Are we bringing the people together so that they can rally behind the same goals and building the country better so that they're more united? Are we able to entertain people without using you know, without providing the kind of toxic information that's out there all the time. This is what I'm concerned about. And I think that is the ultimate barometer of journalism, which is quality information instead of, you know, uh, what you describe as the freedom of uh, reporting, which is important, but sure. I think there are more important functions of, uh, of a media outlet. Different perspectives from different parts of the globe. We do, uh, we do respect that. Uh, what's your reporting? What was the tone? What was your takeaway of what happened here between Presidents Biden and Xi? What was the response in China? Yeah. Well, um, I was very much paying attention to the response here, and I realized that uh, the, the press, for instance, your re coverage was very positive. You had very, um, um, how should I say, very positive coverage of what's happening. I, I even I, told you behind the scenes it was a it was a pleasant surprise for me. Just looking at this, the optics here yeah. to speak and communicate is better to not speak and communicate absolutely. in many times. Absolutely, and that's what, that was what uh, President Xi was saying. It, it doesn't work for the world's two largest economy, the, the biggest developed country and the biggest developing country to turn their backs against each other. Now we're seeing them walking and you know having a, a chit chat. I think that's wonderful. The world doesn't need more confrontation. We need to sit down and understand each other, just like what we're doing when we're looking at each other in the eye, sure. when we had that handshake, things a little bit different, isn't it? Even if we disagree on a lot of issues, we may. Sure. What's the response in China from, from the people you serve, your viewers there? Um, yeah. Are they skeptical of this meeting? Are they encouraged? You tell me. Well, it's very interesting because I went to a farmer's market the first day I was in L.A. Mm -hmm. and I looked around and I uh, enjoyed a little bit of shopping just to, to, to feel the pulse of the place. And I bargained, tried to bargain a little <laughs> bit because that's, you know, as a good old Chinese woman. It's part of our culture. <laughs> yes, we get it here it's on the Indian side. It's part of your culture, too. I tried to bargain and I, tried, and, I, and I had fun. So I told the Chinese general public on social media platform that this is what I, you know, the kind of exchanges I had. And there were people who were very happy that uh, American people were very friendly, but there were also people who were not so happy. They were like, why are you so good, so happy about shopping in America? They were so mean to us. They started a trade war on us. They called us thieves. They, 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 they said we produced a virus and spread it intentionally to the rest of the world. So there was a lot of confusion, a lot of shock, a lot of frustration. And over the past few years, people were, were alienating or feeling that they were alienated sure. by the world's largest economy, which we, uh, with which we had a wonderful a few decade of relationship which was productive and, and beneficial for both sides. And it seems pretty evident, pretty clear that uh, President Xi also wanted to kind of rekindle part of the Silicon Valley and technology, that partnership that we've had for many years. Was that part of his plan here? Was that communicated to China, your viewers? Well, I think the overall, the, the you know, the specific issues won't be resolved until you have the fundamentals solidified. I think that's what President Xi was coming here for, to, to figure out how should the two countries deal with their relationship in a way that is 
future-oriented. And I'm very happy to see that they talked about a future-oriented San Francisco vision, that they need to respect their differences, but work together, manage their differences, uh, contain conflict, have open line communication, increase people-to-people -people exchanges. And I think these are very, very good ideas. I just hope that from both sides, from now on, we're going to put them into action and not have the kind of back and forth as we see a year ago since Indo uh, Indonesia, Bali, sure. when they last met. I, I think that's the key. It, it's We can talk a lot about here, these were leaders, both of our cultures here, but what's going to happen tomorrow in terms of can we move forward? Action. Here? Action, exactly. And, and, and there's a trust. Hopefully both sides, both leaders can, can establish more of a trust. Well, I think, I think the trust is uh, very much evident in China. I think it was a very courageous move for President Xi to come here out of, uh, because the relationship was at its low ebb over the past few years. So for him to come here and he was making it again and again clear that China wants to be on good terms with the United States because uh, together we can make so many good things together. We can, you know, but um, so so he came here with the utmost utmost sincerity. Sure. So right now. Let's see whether the the middle uh, ranges of people, you know, the the officials, can put the actions into real action, put the vision into real action. Uh, they were talking about invite China will invite 50,000 American young students to China over the next five years. I think that's great news. Uh, news, and I've been advocating for streamlining visa application because I say if you want people to understand China, if you want to have them in China and see for themselves. You've got to make the visa simpler. And this is one of the outcomes. And I'm it, so happy to see that. It could be a nice start. Thank you for coming in. And by the way, there was a nice light moment between uh, kind of illustrating the relationship between Presidents Biden and Xi, the photo of President Xi in San Francisco, what, nearly 40 years ago. Yeah. There it is. And it shows a nice personality and rapport between these two. Well, I, I, with your permission, um, since you brought it up, yeah. I, I have this picture. And I'm <laughs> going to use it again. I know I don't like to repeat myself but I do think this is a very significant significant picture it's and you at can the see Golden Gate Bridge at three Golden, years ago. yeah That's I haven't had the opportunity she. to go there he was 32 okay this was 38 years ago and the reason why I found this picture I, I printed out before I came here yeah. um, I didn't know whether how I was going to use it but I printed out because when he mentioned when he met governor of California uh, Gavin Newsom in Beijing he said America San Francisco was the first stop I ever stay um, uh, stepped on yeah. when I visited America and that left him a lasting impression of the country so um, it's it's nice thank you we, we were out of time but thank you for sharing that as well thank you we're, we're back in a moment